Oh, this is right out over the sea. Retired schoolmaster and local bigwig Otter Schertz shows me to my own Rorbu, or fisherman's cottage. Oh, how wonderful! Why did you choose Norway and this Nordic Norway? Well, North I must North. tell you this, because I've had a dream all my life of coming to the north. When I was a child, mm -hmm. um, I had this idea of seeing the northern lights. And in my books, I could read about the snow and the north. Oh. And I longed to go there. And in fact, once as a child, um, out in Malaysia for the coronation, when the Queen was crowned in 1953, yeah. Yeah. my sister and I were dressed in fancy dress. And here is me, seven years old, dressed as a Norwegian girl. My mother made fancy dress costumes for my sister and myself. Mm -hmm. And she plaited our hair very carefully so that she hoped we would look like little Norwegian girls. Do you think I look like a Norwegian girl? Yes, I think you already hear a dream about the Nordic uh, countries. You can see it there. Yeah, I can see, you see it in your eyes. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I've got a bit of Viking blood in me, maybe? Yes, uh, that too. <laughs> are you a Viking? I think you are. Uh, yes, I, I must have uh, Viking blood in <laughs> my horse, yes. <laughs> Well, Otter, this is yeah. just fantastic. It's so beautiful. One thing that didn't feature in my childhood dreams of the North was dried fish. So what's this swinging ominously in the middle of the room? Yes, this is a, this is a, a cod yeah. they fished, but this is a special cod yeah. called king cod. King cod? Yes. They wanted it to tell them the weather. How? What did, how did it do? Did it... Yeah, before the weather changed, it started to turn around. And people could read out from that f uh, indications of storms and other changes in the weather. Such a fish, would it hang in every Rorbu? Yes, in every Rorbu and in many homes. They also bought luck. Oh, Otto, well, I can't wait to see. It's dark outside, but tomorrow I can't wait to see where I am. Well, this is just unbelievable. It's just... It's just fabulously beautiful. All through the night, I could just hear this water dashing under and the seagulls are crying and crying. Time to explore all and an unmistakable smell is luring me uphill. This is as strange a sight as you'll ever see. Thousands of headless cod hung up on poles. Do you speak English? Sir? No? English? Polish! You Poland! You Poland! Yes. And you? Poland! Poland! Three! Three Poland! Yes. It seems in Norway, like in the UK, it's the Poles who do the work. But I've never seen Poles on Poles before. Um, how many fish? How many fish? Huh? I don't know. You don't know? In a Within a month, nearly five million cod will be hung out to dry here. We know the Vikings invaded Britain with luffet and dried fish in their knapsacks. Mind you, back then, drying was about the only option for preserving protein. It's more of a surprise to me that this delicacy remains one of Norway's most profitable exports. It smells of fish, but not a bad smell, just a pretty sort of all-pervasive aroma of fish. <laughs> Thank you. Spasiba. Spasiba Parusko. What's that? It might be something terrible. Goodbye, guys. 
As I was pottering around, I bumped into a man who turns out to be Orr's Lord of the Manor, Sigurd Ellingsen. I'm born here. Yeah. So I'm the fifth generation. Yeah. And uh, my grandson is going to take over. He's working in the summer. Yeah. He's the seventh generation on this spot. And when you say working here, is that you own this? Yes. You own all? All and tinned. And tinned? <laughs> yes. And how many houses, how many Rorbu do you have here? Seventy houses. Seventy. Because the fishing <laughs> yes. is good. Yeah, the fishing is very good. We are the closest spot to the Gulf Stream, and that's where the best fishes are. Yes, and this has been going on for hundreds of years. More than that. More than that, <laughs> really. <laughs> Fish facts are fascinating, even for a fake fur-wearing vegetarian like me, who doesn't even feel comfortable with leather. But what about the catch I am after, the Northern Lights? Will I see them, do you think, here? Not now. Uh, I think it's not cold enough. And, uh, uh, no, it must be colder. Yeah. And then it's flashing all over the sky. It's absolutely marvelous. Is it? The great thing about ore seems to be that, probably because we're so far up, the light here comes in in a different way. So colours seem really fresh washed. Everything seems so clean and sharp. And the other thing I love is this sort of conjunction of colours. They have these dark red houses with the most beautiful light, warm sax blue window frames and corners and then white around the windows, white to bring in as much light as possible. It's a fashion that's going out in England. A lot of people have brown wood around the windows. Don't do it, have white, paint your brown windows white. You have a much, much happier life. I'm gonna do the boulders now, I quite like doing boulders. I want the white to look white, so I'm gonna give it a bit more energy up here. This was a very, very cloudy, stormy sky coming with that sort of slight yellowish green. I think there always comes a time in anything you do, like drawing and painting, or indeed acting, when you think, will I ever be good enough to please, well, myself, let alone anybody else, will it ever be good enough? Will I ever come up to scratch? Or worse still, people lean over your shoulder and go, don't you think his, his eye's a little bit more like that? And you just go, yes, I know, I know, I'm dealing with the eye later. You could just leave. So, you know, I can't bear being judged on the things like this because they're really only for fun. And if it pleases you, which it might not, but I mean, try to make it please you. Try to do things which please you, that's all. And therefore, if it's not good enough, get better. And after all, this isn't going to be exhibited anywhere, except on television. <laughs> If there is one image and one word synonymous with Norway, it is fjord. Otter whisks me away into a world of romance. Fjords like these are so quintessentially picturesque that they've come to define our romantic vision of the North. Sublime, savage, and quite overpowering. These mountains are quite wonderful, Ottar. They look like um, fairy story mountains, don't they? They look as though they would have trolls in them. Ah, uh, many fairy tales connected up to it, yeah. So this that... was giants yeah. and many trolls. And there, you see the, the top there, that was a beautiful lady. Quite cold out here, yeah. isn't it? In the 19th century, this type of scenery inspired writers, artists, and composers like Grieg to write down folk tunes and fairy tales and paint the landscape. 
In doing so, they helped forge a national identity for Norway and an image of the North that struck a chord with people like me, a seven-year-old with my storybooks, in tropical Malaysia. Artists today remain inspired by the Lufoten Islands. I'm off to visit the studio of one of them, Tor Essison. Hi. Hi, How Tor. do you do? How do you do? How lovely to meet you. I too. Welcome to my gallery. It's fantastic. It's my life. I have all things here. Yes, you do. You do. This is one of the most beautiful parts of the world I've ever been. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, I can say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am so lucky. You're a lucky yes. man. You're yes. a good man. <laughs> uh, Tur is every bit the modern artist. 